Welcome back to another segment of The DLA in the News. Welcome back to another segment of The DLA in the News. DLA encourages open communication with industry partners during meeting. April 28, 2023. Article written by Nancy Binecki, DLA Public Affairs. Fort Belvoir, Virginia. Effective communication and working together to resolve issues, were some of the topics discussed during the Defense Logistics Agency's Industry Association meeting at the McNamara Headquarters Complex on April 25. DLA Director, Navy Vice Admiral Michelle Skubik, stressed that the agency is dedicated to maintaining its industry relationships and keeping the lines of communication open. Student clients, welcome back to another reaction brought to you today by the DLA Guru. Today's article talks about DLA encourages open communication with industry partners during meeting. But before I dive into my reaction, I need you to do me a favor. Hit the like, the subscribe button, and the notification bell so that you can be alerted whenever I drop relevant content that will empower your business to be successful with the DLA. Okay, so this particular article, I really got excited when I ran across it. If you notice, I haven't had any new articles probably in the past couple of weeks because I haven't seen anything that I thought would definitely be relevant or would give you kind of an insight on how to be competitive or be positioned to do more business with the federal government by way of the Defense Logistics Agency. So this article, you want to put an ear to it. As a matter of fact, it's a fairly long article, so you may want to watch this video a couple of times in order to absorb all the information that's contained in an article. But there are some high-level carrots that I wanted to pull out of this. And one, this particular meeting, uh, DLA Director let me highlight that correctly. DLA Director, not Navy Vice Admiral Michelle uh, Skubik was a part of this particular meeting with industry. And as you know, in the title of the article, it talks about communication. So one thing I've always liked about the DLA in my 20 years of doing business with them is that communication has always been paramount. DLA is very small business centric. And so having the, the ability to communicate directly with contracting officers and contract administrators, as well as high level managers is always been something that I think has been a huge value to our company uh, over the years in doing business with the DLA. However, in this particular industry, in, in this particular industry meeting, they were summarizing a survey that was conducted where the DLA reached out to small businesses to complete a survey where the DLA wanted to get like a scorecard they wanted to get graded on how well they are supporting the industry our company actually participated with the survey so it's pretty cool to be able to read this article and get some feedback from that survey uh, but as i continue to go through this article there are a couple of key things that stood out to me one the dla talked a little bit about their obligations so they're saying for fiscal year 2023, the projected total sales for hardware and true support ranges from $22.9 billion to $26.4 billion obligations. So that's a lot of cash that the DLA is looking to spend with industry. And guess what? They're looking to spend a lion's share of this op these obligations with small businesses. However, they've had some, some, some issues. And some of those issues have been that DLA's industrial base has shrank 22%. So they've lost about 3,000 vendors, 2,300 of them being small businesses from 2016 to 2022. So if you can kind of think about that, they've lost a lot of small businesses. So if you guys are new to the DLA or new to my content and you, you're brand new to the federal contracting or new to the DLA and you're a small business, this is a great opportunity for you guys to get involved with the DLA. Now, you may wonder, how do I get involved with the DLA? Guess what? I have launched two masterclasses that I think will add a lot of value to giving you the ins and outs on how to hit the ground running to get involved with the DLA. One of the masterclasses, Eight Steps to Successful Federal Supply Contract Bid Submissions to the DLA, 
and Four Steps for Enhanced JCP Certification are two classes that I highly recommend that you take a look at. Continue to watch this video to the very end and I'll talk a little bit more about those classes in more detail. Back to, the, back to my reaction. Okay, so as I continue to read this article, DLA, they, they basically said, what was the biggest result from the survey? And they, the agency's average rating with suppliers dropped to 3.34 from 3.41 two years ago with the biggest decreases in timeliness and timely resolution categories. So if you guys are new to the DLA and you're getting involved and getting some contracts coming through and you're sending emails to contracting officers or contract administrators and you're trying to get support, I, I even think for a lot of folks trying to get their cage code, there's been a lot of delays in timeliness and timely resolutions with the DLA. And our company has experienced some of these issues, some issues as well with the DLA uh, from not getting the full support that we've, that, we, that we're used to receiving pre-pandemic. But I think that it's still, uh, the DLA, their, their understanding what these issues are by, by reaching out to industry and, and getting the surveys. And so I think that's a great thing for small businesses because the DLA knows that they're having some issues and they will fix these problems. All right. So... Another thing that I wanted to point out to you guys is trustworthiness, all right? So even with, uh, I guess, a negative score from dropping from the timeliness category, but the highest factor was trustworthiness, and I would agree with this. They had an average rating of 3.89 out of 5, uh, where um, they had an average score of 3.68 for suppliers who considered DLA a valued partner as well, which I think is pretty awesome. The DLA's highest factor was trustworthiness with an average rating of 3.89 out of 5. Trustworthiness meaning that as small businesses, we feel confident by doing business with the DLA. One, that we'll get paid. And two, that we'll be able to work with the DLA to help work out any issues that we may have along the way in doing business with the DLA. So trustworthiness, I think, is, is spot on because with my experience with other federal agencies, I will say that I've always felt fairly confident that when we ship to the DLA and we invoice the DLA, as long as we do everything we do right, as long as we do everything we're supposed to do right, uh, we get paid. And so I think it's a it's a great organization, the DLA, to do business with from a trustworthy perspective. So I think that's a pretty cool, um, I guess, feedback on that particular rating. And uh, what else is pretty cool about this article? I'm kind of scrolling through it again. Uh, last but not least, at the bottom, there's a link uh, that talks about the DLA demand forecast. But before I actually go into that link, I want to kind of point out this supplier survey. Uh, also, I'll put the links to all these websites in the description below. So please be sure to check the description. So I don't think a lot of student clients check my descriptions, but I put a lot of information in there that can empower your company as well. And so this particular website shows the four key areas that their survey covered, DLA communication, DLA supplier relationships, DLA effectiveness, and growth and uh, potential growth and profit potential. Uh, these are some areas that, uh, that the DLA wanted to get feedback from the industry. So I recommend that you guys take a look at the site to kind of see more details on what those results were and see how you know, this, could, this could potentially uh, support your business as well. And from a demand forecast perspective, this is also a great website uh, that I also put the link in the description below where it talks about the folks that were part of this particular meeting. Uh, you had the Professional Services Council, you had the National Defense Transportation Association, National Defense Industrial Association, the NDIA, which I highly recommend you guys look to become a member. Our company is a member uh, of the NDIA. Uh, Correlation for Government Procurement, National Council of Textile Organizations, Warrior Protection and Readiness Coalition, Coalition, I'm sorry, and National Industries for the Blind. Our company is also part of NIB and Source America. So if you're interested in getting involved or learning more about our experience with the organizations that we are a part of, uh, by all means, send me an email. You can reach out to me at fed.contracting at nmsupply.com uh, where you can arrange a one-on-one contract the consultation with yours truly the DLA guru and again uh, for those those are new to my content or new to the DLA 
and you want to get involved in an emerging business opportunity that I should say is recession proof, you see their obligations in the billions of dollars. And if you have a small business and you want to get into the supply chain and you want to kind of figure out, you know, a new, get a new lease on life or a new opportunity to get involved with the, with the, with the federal government to get you some, some, some past performance results, the DLA is a great customer with low, with very low barriers to entry that you can easily get some, get some feedback or get some past performance working with the DLA that may support some of the service opportunities that you may be going after with, uh, uh, with opportunities that you may find on SAM.gov. All right, so again, this is a great website. I also click here to give you an idea of what that industry association meeting uh, PDF will look like. And again, the, the description or the link will be in the description below. I'll just kind of scroll through this real quick. It gives you a very high level overview of what the, uh, what the, what the discussions were at this particular conference. Uh, I like this slide in particular because it shows some of the obligations and how it's kind of broken out. And here you go. $11.78 billion is earmarked towards true support. So I think if you can see here, DLA True Support Command is a great command to get involved with. I recommend you take a look at the Office of Small Business Programs, submit your capability statement, find out how you can get involved with the product or service that you may offer to see if there may be op opportunities for your company with DLA True Support Command. Uh, as we scroll down here, uh, there's, I see, I'm just kind of going through this real quick. This is a reaction like off the fly. I didn't actually look at this stuff before I um, put this on the uh, video. Um, but uh, see, DLA, SCM, mat mat material, cost, growth. Yeah, it's just a, this is just a great overview of some of the areas that are impacting DLA and how your company may be able to get involved. Um, as it relates to you know current obligations and uh, and future obligations that the DLA may have, hopefully you enjoyed my reaction to today's article. I have a lot more information and content planned uh, to to deliver to you guys, my student clients and my subscribers. I noticed that we get a lot of views from folks that are not subscribers when I look at the analytics. So if you're one of those folks that is new to my content and has kind of been taking a look at it. Please, again, I'll reiterate, hit the like, subscribe, and the notification bell so they can stimulate the, the algorithm. It doesn't cost you anything, but it means a ton, ton to me. But that will conclude my reaction to today's article. And I'm hoping to increase my subscriber base so that I can start to bring in DLA officials to sit in on some of my, some of my videos. I, I like to do one-on-ones with industry folks. And also, I have plans to even have live streams where I have people represented from the small business office or, or, or different, uh, di uh, different areas within the DLA uh, that can answer your questions on the fly. All right, so that will conclude today and I'll see you guys at the top. I hope you always take away how receptive we are to hearing concerns across your organizations, your associations, your members, our suppliers, and those organizations that you represent. We want to hear the problem sets and the trends, Skubix said. The people and organizations at the meeting play a vital role in the Defense Department's national defense strategy, she said. DLA's obligations for fiscal 2023 look to be on par with 2022, said Tim Stark, Chief of DLA Industry Engagement and Analysis while presenting an update on the agency's demand forecast. There are many variables, however, so it is important to stay in sync with the services," added Tim Warfield, Chief of DLA Logistics Operations Planning Division. For fiscal 2023, the projected total of sales for hardware and troop support ranges from $22.9 billion to $26.4 billion in obligations. The exact figures are difficult to pinpoint due to outside factors, including support in Europe, inflation, and supply chain challenges, Moorfield said. DLA's defense industrial base shrank 22%, or by about 3,000 vendors. 2,300 being small businesses, from 2016 to 2022, Stark said. 
Looking at why DLA's defense industrial base is shrinking, is part of the agency's strategic plan, Stark said, adding that DoD lost 43.1% of its small businesses in the same time frame. DLA's efforts to communicate with industry and understand their feedback, could be why the agency lost fewer small businesses, added Matthew Beebe, director of DLA acquisition. Stark presented the results of the most recent DLA supplier survey. The agency's average rating with suppliers dropped to 3.34 from 3.41, two years ago, with the biggest decreases in the timeliness and timely resolutions categories. DLA's highest factor was trustworthiness, with an average rating of 3.89. The agency had an average 3.68 score for suppliers who considered DLA a valued partner. We're happy that trustworthiness remains our strength and that's our highest score. Trustworthiness is obviously the base, of a positive relationship with our vendors, Stark said. The third biennial survey asked 31 questions, about 19 factors covering four areas, the effectiveness of DLA's communications, growth and profit potential, the strength of the DLA supplier relationship, and the effectiveness of DLA processes. Answers had a value of 1 to 5 points, ranging from strongly agree, for 5 points to strongly disagree, for 1 point. The agency received 2,507 responses, from its roughly 6,000 vendors, for a 38% response rate, from a similar cross-section of business types and sizes, contracts and sales amounts, as surveys in 2018 and 2020. In terms of obstacles, 99% of respondents said they experienced impacts from inflation, and 68% said those impacts were severe or significant. Also, 88% of respondents said they were experiencing supply chain disruptions, with 35% categorizing those disruptions as significant, and 7% categorizing them as severe. It's a tough business environment over the last year, with near-universal concerns with inflation, labor, and supply chain disruptions, Stark said, adding that DLA is committed to improving its response time. Problems with responsiveness may not solely fall on DLA, said Andy Newark, Vice President of Operations, for the National Industries for the Blind. I know there's many times that our agencies aren't as quick getting back to you, when you ask for information, so I can't point the finger at DLA because, half the time you're waiting on us. So that's a group effort there on responsiveness, Newark said. Openly discussing survey scores, and improving service isn't something every agency does, he added. Just the fact that we're in here talking about all these tough areas, is a testament to the partnership, and I appreciate it, he said. When asked how the industry can help DLA improve, working together can improve things on both sides, BB said. This is not a one-way street, this is a relationship, BB said. We need the involvement, we need the insights from associations, and other major companies that we work with. We need the constant insight, but we also need you to help share with your companies, what it is that we are doing and your assessment of whether or not we're thinking about it right, or not putting effort into it the right way. And we're only going to advance together. We always do great when the nation needs us, and we always rally during those times," he said. Representatives from eight industry associations attended the meeting, including the Professional Services Council, National Defense Transportation Association, National Defense Industrial Association, and the National Industries for the Blind. A full list of associations that attended, and the meeting slides are available on the DLA Demand Forecast for Industry website. This now concludes another edition of the NMS e-Learning Systems, the DLA in the News. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell, 
so that you can always be abreast of new audio narration segment releases, brought to you by the DLA Guru. Thanks again for watching. I'm Parker Winslow, signing out. Thanks for watching. Also, if you find my related content inspiring, please show your support by hitting the like, share, and subscribe button, along with the notification bell, so that you can be alerted when I drop new relevant content to empower you for success with the DLA. Also, by doing so, you'll help me reach a larger audience of people who may be also interested in learning more about government contracting and doing business specifically with the world's largest customer, the Defense Logistics Agency. Please don't forget to check out my flagship masterclass, Eight Steps to Successful Federal Supply Contract Bid Submissions to the DLA. This masterclass provides a balanced approach to virtual education and is designed for both beginners and seasoned companies alike with proven techniques on the best way to position your organization to being successful with winning federal supply contracts with the DLA. The masterclass contains three and a half hours worth of content along with proprietary and recommended software tools designed to empower you for success with the DLA. Check out the links provided in the description below to learn more today.